So let's talk about Noah. But not Noah and the ark. That's the good Noah, right? That's the, the righteous Noah. That's the Noah where God chooses him uh, instead of everybody else on the whole planet to, to be the one that, that the Lord is going to save in the ark. Him and his family, right? Eight souls and all. We hear about Noah all the time. We hear about his ark. We hear about the rainbow. And all of that's good. But after the ark, we don't hear a lot. After the flood, we don't hear a lot about Noah. There's just one small section that we get to hear. That's uh, Genesis chapter 9, 18 through 27. And it's not a, a very good part of Noah. And we don't know uh, how long after uh, the, uh, the flood this was. Was it a year? Was it five years? A decade? Was it a generation? We're not really sure. Whatever the case, though, we know that Noah had become a farmer and he had planted a vineyard. And he had, uh, it had been a long enough time where he's actually gotten the, the, the crops and he's produced some wine and, and he, well, he has too much and he gets drunk and he ends up naked in his tent. And this is where this story comes in. And a lot can be said there, and I'm sure many people do. They, they, they speak about his drunkenness and how that's a sin and how can somebody uh, do this after the Lord has saved him. And that kind of talks about the simultaneous saint and sinner uh, that's in all of us. But I don't want to go there, right? I want to go somewhere else. I want to, I want to go where the curse happens because the curse happens in this story to Canaan. It happens to Ham's son. Now, I'm not exactly sure what all took place in that tent. Our English says that uh, Noah was uh, uh, uncovered and, and Ham saw the nakedness of his father. And I'm not going to get into a lot, but if, if you read Leviticus 18, you read Leviticus 20, 17, you might have an idea of maybe uh, what was taking place. Was, was this more sordid than just actually seeing his father uh, naked. I'm not sure. If you have questions on this, please do ask your ask your, your pastors about this. But whatever the case, something so egregious happened where we had this curse of, of a son, the curse of progeny, right? Which goes completely against this, this promise that we've heard forever. And so one has to kind of uh, take a look at, at Canaan and all the Canaanites and, and this curse that comes and from there on out, we've got the Canaanites being uh, an evil to Israel, an evil to all of God's people here. And maybe we shouldn't actually focus on the curse itself or the curse of the son, but maybe instead we should hear about the, 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 the way in which this goes uh, in contrast to the promised good, this promised son this promised blessing that will be for all nations. So you see, God preserved Noah, not because Noah was righteous in and of himself, but by faith, Noah believed the promises of his Lord. But what were those promises of his Lord? The promise was that this Messiah was going to come, and maybe they didn't really understand who that was and what that was going to look like, but they knew the promise was going to be there. And so that promise is Jesus. And Jesus is the very Yahweh, who brings Noah through the flood, preserves him and his sons and, and daughters, eight souls and all, does this so that he can actually one day come in the flesh to be the savior of the world and yeah, even die for the sins of Ham and Canaan.